We have quite a few hype trains in our fragrance community. This one right here in the past few years received one. You're probably tuning in to see what I think about this one. Let's see if this one is worth the hype. Hey YouTube fragrance family, welcome to another Robes Await fragrance review. Today I'm going to put my nose on the house of Bulgari and their flanker to this bad boy right here, Aqua. This one called Aqua Amara. Let's get into it. Aqua Amara hit the shelves in 2014. Bottle sizes are the 1.7 ounce, which is the one you see here, and the bigger bottle, the 3.4 ounce. Concentration is eau de toilette. Flankers, this is the flanker of the original Aqua. Pricing, it varies quite a bit. So do your research. You can get it as low as 20 bucks online, right up to $80, $90. So your discounters are your best friends with this one. Um, this one, I would get around $20 to $40. I wouldn't pay any more than that. The nose behind Aqua Amara is none other than Mr. Designer himself. Jacques Cavalier. Um, I own at least two dozen of his creations. I'm going to name off a bunch of them. Um, first and foremost, we got to go with the originator. So he is the nose behind Aqua, the whole Aqua line. So I own Aqua and Aqua Marine. I both have reviews on those. Um, L'ODC, which is of course a classic in the game. Told you guys it's going to start getting crowded in here. Uh, ultraviolet. Um, I have the bottle. It's it's in my wine cooler. Decided not to take it out. Uh, M7, of course, another classic. Um, we have BLV for men. Uh, Puram. So we got another one right here. Au <laughs> Parfumé au Thé Blanc. Okay, another Bulgari-based uh, fragrance. Um, more in the women's aisle. Uh, white Tea. That one's a good one. Fuel for Life by Diesel. Um, again, like I said, Mr. Designer here. I can keep going. Um, Armani Diamonds is another one that I own. Um, uh, of course, uh, also Rive Gauche, which is also in my wine cooler. I decided not to take it out, among others. And of course, these two I felt were also, these are higher end fragrances, Italian Bergamot for the Zegna line. And this one right here, which is very, very interesting because he did uh, Sicilian Mandarin. Now there's man Sicilian Mandarin in this apparently. And oh boy, is it a hell of a difference between this and this. Um, if you really like the Mandarin in Amara, this stuff is bonkers. Uh, of course the price tag fits with it. So as you can see, Mr. Designer here, I'm not gonna go through all of them. Um, this is just a small portion of what I actually own. Um, Jacques Cavalier is a leader in the fragrance game, um, has his nose plastered all over our men's game. So the note breakdown, let's take a look at the note breakdown for Amara. Um, it starts off in the opening very fresh. We have that Sicilian Mandarin. In the mid, we have Neroli. And in the base, we have Patchouli and Olibanum, which uh, of course uh, translates to incense. Major notes to my nose would have to be the Mandarin, Neroli, and Patchouli and Olibanum are basically secondary notes in this fragrance. It gives uh, Amara more depth than anything. It's not really big and thick, but the really huge uh, note that I would like to pinpoint is one that Cavalier has utilized is, of course, Sicilian Mandarin that has been utilized in both of these. This one's named aptly, Sicilian Mandarin, and it is a definite stunner. This one, not the same type of Mandarin note, and I'll get to that, of course. Group, this is an aquatic, uh, aromatic aquatic fragrance. Uh, how many sprays and where for Mara? I go my standard one on the chest, two on the neck, and when I do two on the neck, it's one on each side like this. Um, the atomizer is actually pretty good on this, and two on the arm. So I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, bring them up, and I would actually put it right here uh, for the sprays. So five sprays is my uh, application for Amara. Now let's get to sniffing. Um, I'm gonna hit myself at least once more for the road here, um, obviously to just remind me of the introduction of Aqua Amara. Um, by the way, presentation, um, they knocked it out of the park. I love um, this uh, copper-like look. From first sniff, that's fresh. Uh, Mandarin is actually very well done for a designer scent. 
Um, so let's get into dissecting this sucker. From first sniff, the Sicilian Mandarin is mixed in with the original Aqua Salty Aquatic composition. So it actually pulls a lot from the original, which I love. I love this thing. I think it's actually a classic in the men's game. Uh, I felt the Mandarin was actually very well done. Um, many re reviewers or reviews state that it smells like cleaner or highly synthetic. Uh, yeah, it's synthetic, but it's not um, a, a bad orange like a artisan from John Varvatos. I could not, that was, I could not tolerate it. It was bad. It smelled like cleaner. Um, this is, of course, a synthetic orange, but it, it really is almost, almost authentic to my nose. I really liked the Mandarin in this one. Um, this mandarin note actually pushes quite a bit right into the dry down staying throughout the set to keep the orange theme alive. So it really did, uh, I know this is like a copper look, but it really just evokes the color of this bottle. Very, uh, very beautiful mandarin note that actually pushes throughout the fragrance. This is paired with two high secondary notes that are the salty aquatic tinge from the original aqua. Um, if you haven't seen my original review on the originator, um, it's a very, um, very daring note. Um, it's not your typical aquatic, uh, feeling. It's very much deep sea diving type of feel. Um, it's very deep. It has depth and it's darker than your run of the mill aquatic. It's actually something very unique in the game. Very well done by Bulgari. Um, this note makes the original aqua, a very daring scent in my personal opinion and even though it's pulled back here and it really is pulled back it's not in the forefront as the original would be um it makes this scent to be quite honest um this one is obviously has a hype uh, highly loved um it actually surprised me a little bit that this one got the hype it did just because of that aquatic tone is very unique and very different um the soapy neroli comes in um, it does not get much mention in fragrance reviews, actually hardly at all. However, it's a huge factor in Amara. Neroli helps the opening with its citrus. It gives a citrus tone. Of course, you have Mandarin, but you have something else here. Neroli, um, it gives it a different edge to the introduction with that different citrus. It gives the scent also its floral appeal in the dry down, its floral undertone. Um, it really is, um, at times when wearing this scent, it is at the forefront, and other times it's just a high secondary note. Um, it's not as thick as like a Neroli Portofino where you're getting a lot of that Neroli, um, or as good as a Neroli Portofino, but it is very, very solid. So I gotta give it props for that. To note many noses while wearing this fragrance out, um, a lot of people gravitated their nose towards the Neroli. A lot of people caught that right away and that's all they smelt. And they said, that's really floral, that's feminine. Um, things like that, that's the Neroli talking to people. And a lot of people, it surprised me because it's a high secondary note. I know that secondary notes can grab the attention of a nose, uh, but it really did surprise me that I, I got that much feedback on the Neroli, that people were saying it's floral, it's feminine. And I'm like, really? Um, I know there's Neroli in here, but really that's all you're grabbing? Um, so it was very, very interesting um, while wearing this one that I was getting that type of feedback. Now let's get into the dry down of Amara. In the dry down, this is where Amara loses its points, right? I'm very happy with the Mandarin. I actually don't think it's it's synthetic as people say. Um, I really love the Neroli. I love the uh, aqua aquatic theme that it steals from, pulls from the original. I really like that opening. The opening is for a frag head. I love it. In the dry down, not much movement here. The Mandarin keeps pushing from the opening. It loses a little bit of steam. So does the Neroli. Neroli is almost going to be your central theme in the dry down. There's a slight incense and patchouli basically just giving this scent depth more than anything. Um, they're not game breakers in any shape, way, or form. Um, you're not going to, if you're trying to dissect notes and you're trying to figure out what patchouli smells like or incense, um, good luck with this fragrance because you're not gonna get any, any of that. They are just there for depth. Um, it starts getting drier, um, actually, the more it sits on my skin. So that juiciness and that aquatic tinge is starting to pull back more and more. And Amara does bring up an imagery to me um, of seawater in the opening. 
but also warm white sand in the dry down. It felt like it was more sandy um, and, and more of that warmth than, than anything. Um, it really did warm up in the dry down. Uh, Amara is a very thin fragrance, to be quite honest. It's a simple composition, which at retail, I'll be quite honest with you guys, if you're looking at this at like a, a Sears or something like that, and you're looking at around $80, $90, don't do it. It's not worth it. Um, surprisingly, the price point, even after a year on the market, brought it to the bargain bin, um, which as a reviewer makes me think twice on being purchase worthy. So looking at it as a $90 fragrance, I would look at it in, in my camera right now and tell all of you, I don't think this is worth it, in my personal opinion. Um, however, now that it has hit bargain bins, it's very cheap. This is making me second guess myself and say, you know what, the price point's a huge factor here. And for that price point, it is actually quite decent. Now let's take a look at the age group. Simple, straightforward, anybody can wear it. Um, I could even, dare to say this could be a unisex fragrance. Um, I really think that Amara um, can go right up to teenagers, especially for the price point. Teenagers, this is probably a lot of you uh, bought it because of, of the hype of it. It's highly affordable and I understand why. Um, I totally understand if you blind bought this for 30 bucks, um, it's within budget. Uh, fra fragrances, it's compared to anything with an orange, mandarin, um, even orange blossom. Um, there is a lot of fragrances that this thing is compared to. Uh, most notably, it's compared to the most popular orange-based scent uh, in the designer game, Tel d'Hermes. Um, not the same theme at all. I don't see the comparison at all, except they, they're both uh, have an orange theme alive. Um, this artistically uh, smashes the crap out of this. Um, complexity, depth, uh, everything, it just beats it. Um, so there's no real comparison between those two. Um, I would compare this to Artisan by John Varvatos. Um, Artisan utilizes an orange blossom. Um, this utilizes, uh, of course, Neroli. Um, this is actually better than Artisan by John Varvatos. Um, then they're in the same price point. Uh, best time to wear Amara would have to be, this is a daytime use of scent. Um, I wear it in the heat, I wear it at the beach, um, you can wear it for walks, things like that, casually, daytime, your day off, type of, type of things like that. Um, you can wear it at work too. Uh, seasons, I would have to say this is uh, geared for summer, but at the same time, you can wear it for spring during this time of year, summer nights. Um, this is going to be a beast for summer nights. I really think that that heat, um, you know, it's not, um, especially in Canada, these summer nights, this is gonna work so well. It's a little cooler out. Um, this is where this is going to shine. Um, also, you can wear it during the fall. I really think this is a three season type of fragrance. Uh, development on Amara, very, very much linear. There's not much in the Richter still going. Um, it's not average, it's not complex. It's very much linear. Work appropriate, yes, um, very. Um, it has some daring notes in it, like I said. Um, really that aquatic tinge and of course the neroli in a way, depending, you know, people may take that the wrong way. Work appropriate, very much so. Signature scent worthy, yes, uh, that too. Um, someone, especially a teenager out there, can wear this as a signature scent. So let's get into my rating system. I can't wait to rate this one and let you guys know what I think about it. So projection, six bottles out of 10. Um, this is solid, but not great as far as the projection goes. Fairly moderate on my skin. Longevity, five bottles out of 10. A fairly low score here. Uh, longevity, I know a lot of people are claiming beast with this thing. I'm never, I never got it. It was between four to seven hours. At times it did pass the seven hour mark easily, but other times it faded quite quickly. So four to seven is the score I'm giving it uh, for a five bottles out of 10. Compliment factor, this is where Amara actually surprised me as a nine bottles out of 10. It is very high and that's where the popularity goes. Um, I don't get it to be quite honest. I, I did get some, um, I would say some people would say it as a negative feedback as far as the Neroli goes. A lot of people got that floral, but um, this one, not huge in the compliment factor, uh, fairly decent, but this thing uh, does beat it as far as compliment factor goes. So I gotta give it to it um, nine bottles out of 10. That goes to uniqueness, seven bottles out of 10. It has some unique factors. That aquatic tone is very much unique to the brand itself. Um, no one does that 
deep sea diving aquatic notes. I know it's not as present in this one. Um, if you really like the aquatic tone in this and you haven't smelt the original, oh, you're in for a treat. This thing is a classic for a reason. I love this, this is my favorite from um, this aquatic line. Uh, pricing versus what you get, I'm going to rate it pretty much for what everybody's getting it for. You'd be a sucker if you got it for retail out of $80, $90. Um, everywhere online, this thing is going at around 25 to 35 bucks. Um, that is a great price. I would say eight bottles out of 10 for that. Versatility, this is fairly versatile. I'm gonna give it an eight bottles out of 10. For the smell itself, seven bottles out of 10. It has tons of redeeming qualities. However, it's lacking in that depth, the complexity. The dry down, it seems like it, it, it was just chugging along. And some people can call this a money grab, you know, high end introduction of a beautiful introductory note to sell a lot of units. And then the dry down is something less to be desired. I really think the Neroli actually did very well. The Mandarin kept pushing. So, uh, the scent itself, seven bottles out of 10, I think I'm being fair here with the smell itself, and that goes to an overall score. Amara is going to get seven bottles out of 10. Just a solid flanker from the House of Bulgaria for their aquatic line. Um, it's not one of the worst from the line, and it is on par with, you know, it, it would probably be second or third in line uh, in regards to me rating them. So that goes to a buy, try, or pass. Aqua Amara gets a try. It all depends on you. How much do you like a mandarin note in your fragrances? Are you looking for that particular type of, of fragrance in the designer game? Price is a huge factor. Collection is a huge factor. If you own a bunch of orange-based scents, this may come to be a redundant release for you if you don't. So overall for Aqua Amara, it has some flashes of a solid designer release. It really does. Um, there's a quite a few things that I took away from it and I was like, damn, that's really good. It plays the role of a daring designer scent at times. You know, that aquatic note, I, I'm gonna say it, it is a daring aquatic note. Not everybody's gonna like that. Even though it's muted in this fragrance, it still has it. It goes from that, like a daring designer scent that almost blows your mind to a safe synthetic scent that gives the user just a very solid opening to a subpar dry down. So it's really mixing all of them together and what you get is a above average designer release. That's all it is. The price point truly saves this scent. If you're looking at around 80 bucks online for this, I would have said, forget about it. For 30 bucks online, this is a solid entry point scent for a beginner, for a summer scent, or um, just adding an orange or a mandarin addition to a rotation for casual use, for somebody that has a little larger collection. It's a solid flanker, but don't expect a game changer here. Um, it really didn't uh, blow my socks off, but it was a very solid flanker from the house. Uh, so this is my review on Bulgari's Aqua Amara Solid Flanker. Thank you for watching my review on it. And if you wish to see the presentation in depth, as usual, stick around at the end and I will take a look at the atomizer and all that. And remember, a great or poor fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one. Now looking at presentation, as you can see, Bulgari uh, in Boss, Aqua Amaro, same thing. It has some ribbing to it. Um, some information in the back too. And this box uh, opens up just like the rest of the Aqua line as um, you can't really see here, but it does have the uh, website and it just opens up like so. And uh, the bottle is actually nice and cushy in here. Now look looking at the bottle itself, beautiful. I love the colorway here, the copper uh, look to it, the brown, beautiful, exquisite. It's actually the nicest one from the Pebble line. I call it the Pebble line, but you can also call it teardrop line. Um, it's supposed to resemble either a water drop, droplet, or some say a pebble. So either way. Um, so it says Aqua Amara right here. It actually has the brand on the atomizer. Uh, my old Aqua bottles do not have that. Atomizer is right here, Bulgari. And then of course the sticker that uh, rounds out the bottom. And you have your batch code in black right here. The atomizer, very good actually on this one. Um, really steady, well done.